both Welsh and English subtitles are available throughout this podcast. So, if you're either a flute Welsh speaker or hard of hearing, just select the red arrow at the bottom of the screen as shown in this diagram, then click CC for closed caption, and then select your preferred language. Enjoy. Hi, my name's Justin, and as part of my sports science and outdoor activities degree, I decided to create this podcast in order to demonstrate how to effectively take and then follow a bearing. Now this podcast will be really suitable for anybody who's thinking about pursuing any form of navigational based outdoor activity and also any instructors out there who may want to include some form of demonstration to their teaching. Now taking a bearing is a really important skill to have whenever you're navigating around either the mountains or the moorlands. But before we look at the skill itself let's take a look at the compass and some of the terms we use throughout this podcast in relation to taking a bearing. Okay, this is the compass and all the various features you need to know in relation to taking a bearing. Okay, so the perspex surrounding shown here is known as a base plate. Next, you have a direction of travel arrow and this is meant to be pointed in the direction you want to go, i.e. from position A to position B. This circular section located on the base plate is known as a compass housing and it can rotate in a 360 degree manner and the numbers located on it are normally within 2 degree increments. Okay, firstly within the compass housing we have what is known as a compass needle or magnetic needle and this just shows us the constant direction of magnetic north. Now the second red arrow within the compass housing is known as a grid north arrow and its purpose will become evident later on in the podcast. Finally, the red and black lines running through the compass housing are known as the orientating lines and these will be used to match up to the blue north-south grid lines located on the map. Okay, so now you're familiar with the compass itself, let's have a look how to use it. One of the first things you want to do before taking a bearing is try and orientate the map so what you see on the ground matches up with what you're looking at on the map. And this can be easily done by thumbing the map at your position and rotating it around until the features on the map just match up with the features on the ground, just yeah, easily like so. And this just orientates yourself really well to the ground and also at least gives you a rough estimation of your intended direction of travel. Now before you as you take the bearing, I think it's a really good idea to get yourself into a good position. And I have a good position to get yourself down on one knee with the other knee raised. And this gives you a nice flat platform to rest your compass and your map on. And also, depending on the wind, you can move your body around and maybe gain yourself some much needed protection. Now to take the bearing, there's two things you need to know. That's where you are right now and where you want to get to. And in this demonstration, we're trying to get from this sheet pod on the left, which I've labelled position A on the map, to a corner in the wall, which I've labelled position B. Now take the bearing, you're going to take your compass and place it on the map and then slide the compass until the edge of the compass base plate joins the two positions, just like so. Now make sure that the direction of travel arrow is facing the right direction. And that's from position A to position B, so in the way you, you intend to travel. If you get this wrong, you're going to end up with a bearing 180 degrees in the opposite direction. And once you've done that, holding the compass firmly still, you need to rotate this compass housing until the grid north arrow in the compass housing is facing north on the map. A little tip here is the top of the place names are normally facing north, so I'll spin it around, it's facing north. And to get this really accurate, you need to line up the black and red orientated lines within the compass housing with these blue north south grid lines on the map. So, tiny little adjustment there, just like so. And now you can take, take your compass and read off your bearing. So, in this demonstration, we've got a bearing of 132 degrees. Now, before we convert this to magnetic bearing, it's good to have a look over your map and see if you can see any. Um, obvious features that will come across as, as we're walking on our bearing. And you can see here, there's a spot height that goes right over our path. And when we're there, if we look to our left, we should see another spot height. So this just gives an indication that we're on the right path. And that's never you know, a bad thing to know that you know, we're going right. Okay, so now you've done that, all you should do is pick the compass up and read off the bearing. And as you can see here, we have a bearing of 132 degrees. This is actually known as a grid bearing, and we need to convert this into a magnetic bearing so we can use it on the compass. And the difference between a grid bearing and a magnetic bearing is known as a magnetic variance. And this actually differs depending where you are in the world and actually the year. So, for example, here in North Wales in 2005, the magnetic variance was 3 degrees. But as every four years, magnetic variance decreases by 1 degree, now in 2009, in North Wales, it's 2 degrees. So that means we need to add 2 degrees to this compass bearing to make it a magnetic bearing. So, we add it on. <clears throat> and there you go, you can see we've got a bearing of 134 degrees. So now we've got our bearing, let's see about how to follow it. 
going to follow the bearings, really simple. So hold the compass out in front of your chest, about chest height, and then rotate we'll your whole body round. Don't just try and rotate the compass, take your whole body until the magnetic needle falls over the grid north needle inside the compass housing. Just let it fall. There you go, fine. And once you've done that, look through the compass, through the direction of travel arrow, and try and find yourself a fixed reference point in the distance. And this is a really good uh, habit to get into. So if you try and follow a bearing, continue, continue looking at the compass, either due to the ground undulating, the compass needle's going to fishtail, going to walk off the bearing, or if you continue staring at the compass, you're going to put your foot in a hole and fall over, and that's never ideal. So we've got our uh, fixed reference point to head towards. Let's put our compass away, and let's head towards that. Okay, as you can see, we've arrived at our fixed reference point. So, set the compass out again, hold it out to our chest, rotate our whole body around until the needle falls over the grid north needle, look down, look down the direction of travel arrow, find ourselves another fixed reference point, put the compass away again and head towards it. So, as you can see, we come across this spot height that we identified early on in the map. And if we just look to the left, we can see the other spot height that we identified. So, it just lets us know that we're on the right direction, we can carry on. Well, as you can see, we've come across this boundary that's not located on the map. But if you just look up there, you can see there is a gate. So whenever possible, do try and cross these boundaries at a gate if they've been provided. But let's look to our left. You can see that our bearing has brought us to the wall, the corner of the wall. So it means we can handrail this wall all the way back to the car. And you've been watching how to accurately take and then follow a bearing. I'll just give you a quick overview of the skill and that's first of all to get the map and orientate it with the ground then get yourself into a good position then take the bearing then make sure you account for magnetic variance then make sure to hold the compass in front of you but take your whole body round then make sure, make sure you get yourself a fixed reference point in the distance don't try and walk looking at the compass so <coughs> there's the skill now make sure you get out and practice you can practice it at home in your bedroom but it's better to practice it on the move while you're actually out on the hills it is a really important skill to have so Enjoy it and get our practice.